while still in this atmosphere, let's, if we can rise for the reading of the word for today. Genesis 25, 19 to 26. Grab your Bible. I want you to confess with me this morning. We're gonna, we gotta go back to, to confessing this. Can someone just grab your Bible? I know some of us have uh, iPads. Some of us have our, our phones. Grab whatever, whatever your Bible is, you know? And then I want you to confess this with me. Is everybody ready? Yes. Everybody's ready? I see a bunch of, uh, I, I appreciate the old school people with the physical Bible. Just grab your Bible, say that I am transformed by the word of God. I am transformed by the word of God. I am inspired by the spirit of God. I am inspired by the spirit of God. And I am driven by love. And I am driven by love. So let's read in Genesis 19, in Genesis 25, 19 to 26. The Bible declares that these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham fathered Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethul, the Ar Aramean of Padam Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean to be his wife. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived the children struggled together within her. She said, if he's thus, why is this happening to me? She went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your wombs. Two people from within you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other. The older will serve the younger. When her days, just, just go back to verse 23. The Bible says that the old the older will serve the younger. So God is telling him that the way things are supposed to happen is that the younger serves the older. But God flips it around. He says that the older will serve the younger. When her days to give birth were completed, behold, there were twins in her room. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy cloak. So they called him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel so Jacob came out he was holding Esau's heel so they called him Jacob Isaac was six years old when he bore them and Jacob means the one who grabs the heel so it was a way of saying the one who cheats the one who deceives essentially it means the one who cheats because in Hebrew if you are grabbing someone's heel if you're attacking someone by the heel you are cheating so Father, we thank you again for your word this morning. We thank you again because your word is alive and active. Holy Spirit, we thank you again for your move in this place. We thank you again because you're saturating the atmosphere. We thank you again because the light of our eyes are open. Father, I pray you to open our eyes so that we can see the wonders and the beauties that are found in your law. Sharpen our ears and make them attentive to your word. And Lord, make our heart ready and available to be able to receive our daily bread for today. We bless you, O oh Jesus, in the mighty name. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Let's be seated in the presence of God. So when we began this year, um, the apostle began with a very prophetic and powerful message that all our churches are just going upon. He spoke and said that this year is going to be a year of divine increase. Can someone say divine increase? You get your neighbor confess, he said, the year of divine increase. So that was kind of like, this is kind of like the year that we're in. So you want to, we want to tap into for the next couple of weeks, what does it really mean to have a divine increase? So divine increase is not any kind of increase. Because in life you can have increase, but it doesn't, it's not necessarily divine. So divine increase is not arithmetic increase. Arithmetic increase is I have one, I add two, I add three. So I go, I increase by a fixed number, you know? I have one child, I have two child, two children, I have three children, you know? That's arithmetic increase. Exponential increase is kind of like increase, but a bit more faster, you know? So it increases, but you're increasing a bit more faster, but it's still on the human level. But the vine increase is increase with God's factor. So it's not a mathematical factor, but it's a factor of God. 
So whereas a normal human increase is someone gets married, they have a child and they give birth. That's normal. And they get a second child. That's normal. But divine increase, it's almost like Sarah and Abraham. The Bible says, says that Sarah was old and Abraham was old. And Sarah, not only was she old, she was barren. So when divine increase meets those kind of people, it takes people that were barren and gives them children. That's what we mean by divine increase. So not only does it take the people who were barren and were old and gives them a child, it takes it and it converts them into a nation. So Abraham doesn't just have children. Out of an old man, out of a barren woman, comes out an entire nation. So divine increase is increase in the factor of God. So divine increase is the kind of increase that takes someone who is always chronically broke and makes him a source of blessings for the others. Divine increase is the kind of increase that takes someone who has not been educated but makes him lead people who are educated. So that's the kind of increase you want. Say, I want divine increase. I want divine increase. You don't want regular increase. You want divine increase. Increase with the factor of God. Amen. But divine increase does not happen randomly. Things that are spiritual do not happen randomly. You can't just sit and expect it to come. So in the next few days, we're going to, in the next few weeks, we're going to demystify certain secrets of divine increase. Because people that increase divinely have certain secrets that are attached to them. The certain things that are hidden, that are not uh, apparent on first sight. Certain things that are not, you don't notice them, they are concealed. So those are the things that we want to demystify. Because once you understand the secrets of divine increase, once you begin tapping into the secrets of divine increase, then you can really apply it to your life and get results. So results come by demystifying the secrets of divine increase. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be focusing on the life of a rather odd character in the Bible. We're going to be speaking about the story just we just read. This was the story of Jacob. Because the promise of God does not start with Jacob. It starts with Abraham. And then from Abraham, Abraham actually had multiple children. But strangely enough, the promise when it goes from Abraham, it doesn't go to all his children. It goes to Isaac. Right? Abraham, Isaac. And then from Isaac, Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. But oddly enough, even there, the promise does not go to both of them. It only goes to Jacob. But Jacob is the kind of person who, what makes him strange, what makes him rather odd, is that when the promise arrives at the time of Jacob, the promise experiences a divine increase. Because Jacob has 12 sons and all his 12 sons receive the promise. So there is something happening in the life of this man who's called a cheater, who's called a fraud, who is kind of like belittled that when it comes to him, all his children receive that. So even though the promise starts with Abraham, the nation is called the nation of Jacob. Even though the promise God says, I'm the God of Abraham. He says, I'm the God of Isaac. But most of the time, he says, I am the God of Jacob. I'm the God of the cheater. I'm the God of the one who came in second, but I made him first. Yes. So Jacob, this man of divine increase, his life begins oddly. It begins by kind of like a contradiction what we're going to call unfavorable odds. He was an underdog. It's almost as though, think about the, imagine, I don't think Tanzania has this, but imagine Tanzania setting up a hockey team and playing against Canada. You know, they don't only have bad odds, they have unfavorable odds. If I come and I tell you Tanzania beat Canada, not the junior team, the men's team. 
You're going to be like, are you sure? Yeah. In what sport? They beat them in ice hockey. They're unfavorable odds. So people that increase divinely overcome unfavorable odds. Can someone say I'm overcoming unfavorable odds? I'm overcoming unfavorable odds. So unfavorable odds is almost as though there are just certain things that are naturally working against you in order for you to have divine increase. Because Jacob, as we're going to see today, his life was kind of like positioned in a way that things were not working for him. Things were not set up to work for him. Unfavorable odds. So the person of divine increase, his first secret is that he has to overcome unfavorable odds. There are certain things that are standards against his life. Certain things that are stood up against him. And he has to overcome those odds. So what, are, what does it look like when things have set up against you? So let's take a look at this. We're going to speak about three signs of things that happen when odds are not in your favor. But you want divine increase. The first thing is this. There's a discrepancy between the promise of God and your current reality. A discrepancy between the promise of God and your current reality. So in Jacob's life, we see God promising him certain things. He says that the promise or the blessing is going to be through him. But when Jacob is born, he's not born the first. He's born the second. So he inherently has something that's already set up against him. So his current reality being the second one does not match the promise of God. So God says that Jacob will rule, but Jacob is the last one. Is there someone who's going through certain things in their life where there seems to be a mismatch between what God has promised you and what you're living? God has promised you healing. He says that by his stripes you are healed. But last week you went to the doctor, you got diagnosed with cancer. There's a discrepancy. God says that through you, he will bless your family, but you can't find the job. You're educated. You are smart. You speak in English. You speak in French. You even speak Portuguese better than Pastor Harry. But you can't hold a job together. Even in McDonald's, they hired all the young kids. They laid you off. Odds are not in your favor. There are discrepancies between the thing that God has called you to do, the person that God has called you to be, and who you are currently are. So what do you do when odds are set up against you? That means that there are certain things that God wants you to be that you can't actually be. Things are working against you. Things are working against your family. It's not that you don't have the promise of God. You have it. But the odds are set up against you. There's a discrepancy between what God has called you. Jacob had a discrepancy. Jacob was supposed to be great. But it's Esau who comes out first. And it wasn't something that Jacob necessarily did. Some of us have unfavorable odds, not because of things that we did. Jacob did not choose to be born second. He was just born second. You did not choose to be born in a poor family, but you're just born in a poor family. You did not choose to be rejected by your dad, but you were rejected by your dad. You did not choose that your mom will leave your dad and leave you with someone else, your mother-in-law who never treated you right. So the odds are set up against you. It did not come from anything you did. You did not choose that the teacher who was supposed to help you failed you because they didn't like you. It wasn't anything that you did, but things are set up against you. 
So when things are set up against you, I want you to understand that, yes, there's a discrepancy, but it's that discrepancy between the person that God has called you to be and your current reality that opens the vacuum for God's divine increase. Amen. So because there's a difference between the person that God has called you to be and who you are, there's a discrepancy. Brother Blair, can you minister with me, please? So it's this discrepancy. This void, this gap. Because you are rejected, God says that that's a sign that he's going to divinely increase you. Because you came second, because in the family nobody ever considered you, that's a sign that God wants to divinely increase you. Amen. Because nobody ever counted on you. Nobody ever thought that something good will come out of you. That's a sign that God is going to divinely increase you. Because people said you're not good enough. Because you couldn't speak well. Because you couldn't walk well. Because you weren't the prettiest girl. That means that God is going to marry you before all of them. Amen. Because you weren't the guy who was always well dressed. That means that God is going to favor you. Amen. So whenever there's a gap between what God has called you to do, who God has called you to be, the promise that God has given you, and you're not living it right now, know that that's a sign that God is about to divinely increase you. Amen. So don't walk with your head bowed down. Yes, come on. Saying that I'm not living it right now. I'm not, I'm it not right seeing now. it right now. I'm not seeing it right now. But just because I'm not seeing it right now, yes. that means that I'm the best person who's positioned for a divine increase. Amen. So when the odds are against you, know that that's a sign God is about to divinely increase you. Amen. When I'm not yet living the promise of God and it's, t- it's taking its time, you know, when I am barren and it's taking its time, that's because God says that the odds are against you, I'm going to favor you now. There's a discrepancy, but that discrepancy creates room for God. Amen. There was a man who was sick lame for years 38 years he was lame (laughs) you know there are other people who normally when they walk you know they gotta walk they gotta crawl and then they gotta you know shake a little bit and then fall but this man was lame 38 years but when his time of divine increase decided to come come on god Because God is a divine increase. Normal increases, you got to crawl, and then you got to walk, and then they got to hold you. No, when that man received his divine increase, he went from a lame to someone who was carrying his mat and saying, no, I am changing because the odds were changing. So when you don't see it yet, when you're not living it yet, when you're not experiencing it yet, know that it's a sign that God is about to divinely increase you. So don't complain. Don't murmur. Know that my divine increase is here. The further away it looks, the closer it actually is. Oh. So God is about to divinely increase you. Amen. When there's a discrepancy between what he told you you're going to be and who you are. The bigger the discrepancy, the bigger the increase. Amen. So that's the first sign when the odds are against you. There's a discrepancy between who God has called you to be and who you are living right now. But the thing with Jacob is that the odds were so against him that the second thing that we see in his life is that the people who are supposed to help him, he doesn't have favor in their eyes. Genesis 25 verse 28. One thing we see there, we see a rather odd thing Genesis 25 let me open it here that Genesis 25 we're going to read verse 28 the Bible declares this I'll start from verse 27 but when the boys grew up 
Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate his game. That means he ate the, 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 the things uh, Esau hunted. But Rebekah loved Jacob. So Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. If you are going to inherit something, you need favor in the eyes of people who are supposed to help you. Because as you're going through divine increase, God has to send people to help you. God has to send people to assist you. Because you will not divinely increase if God doesn't give you favor in the eyes of men. So, but Jacob did not have favor in the eyes of the person who was supposed to help him. At that present time, nobody was there to help him. Because Isaac was the person who was supposed to bless him. But Isaac preferred the other one. Is there someone who has ever been left by the people who are supposed to help him? The teachers were supposed to show you which program to choose, but they didn't want to pay attention to you. Your mom was supposed to take care of you, but she left you. That boss was supposed to give you a promotion, but he overlooked you. You worked so hard. You worked night and day. But the new guy got the promotion, not you. So the people who are supposed to help you, you don't have favor in the eyes of those people. And that can be frustrating. Because you're saying, I'm working hard. I'm doing hard. But these people who are supposed to help me are not helping me. One of the ways we can do is we can start hating people. We can start being against them. We can start talking. The leader doesn't like me. The pastor doesn't like me. Doesn't he know that I'm called by God? Doesn't he know that I'm anointed by God? He doesn't like me. My mother doesn't like me. The boss doesn't like me. The country doesn't like me. Because you don't have favor in the eyes of those who are supposed to help you. But whenever you see that presently, there are certain people that you need to help you get to where you are. But you don't have those people. Know that you are properly positioned for divine increase. Amen. Because God helps people that don't have favor currently in the eyes of those who are supposed to help them. Because how else will they know that God did it? How else will they know that God increased you divinely? How else will they know that God increased your family divinely? How else will they know that God increased your finances divinely? if you didn't have a father to give you wealth how else would they know that god increased you divinely if when you came in this country you had nobody to help you around how else will they know how else like our pastor said he came in this country with a hundred bucks in his pocket so when he increases it's really god who increased him divinely come on yes when i came in this country and I was supposed to go back to school. You know, they gave me a bunch of tests. They gave me a bunch of complication. Believe it or not, when I started, they put me in English as a second language. Because they didn't think I was good enough. So the odds were against me. The people who were supposed to help me were holding me back. But when God gives you divine increase, He's going to break through the timeline of man. Oh, so even yes. though those people... Those teachers they didn't think I could speak English. They didn't think I could articulate myself well. They didn't know that God would increase me so divinely in two years that I finish ahead of time. Come on, come I finish on. above yes. time that God Himself took care of even giving me scholarships, yes. even though I could not speak English according to them. Yes. Why? Because God increases you divinely. So when you don't see people helping you out, don't complain. You know that oh. This is a sign that God is about to increase Amen. me divinely. Yes. Because the signs are kind of like the opposite of what God is doing. You understand? Yes. <laughs> because you are overcoming unfavorable odds for divine increase. People are they're supposed to help you. They're supposed to coach you. They're supposed to mentor you. But some of us, the people that were supposed to help us, not only do not help us, they actually work against us. The leader that was supposed to mentor you is actually holding you back. I know the story of a young man who's serving God, fervorously loving God. But he was in a church where the leaders were persecuting him. 
But God says, stay, remain. So when you see people like that having divine increase, you don't want to ask yourself, how come they had divine increase? You got to ask them, when was that time that people stood up against you? When was the time where people were supposed to help you try to kill you? Where people who are supposed to give you an opportunity took it away from you. Not only did they, it's one thing for you not to help me, but it's another for you to work against me. When the friends who said they were always going to be there stabbed you at the back. Now they're talking about you. Instead of them helping you. So when you see all of these things positioned and you don't have the favor in the eyes of the people that were supposed to help you, that's a sign that God is about to increase you Amen. divinely. Amen. It's okay. I want you to come down. I want you to relax. I want you to say that people, I don't have favor in the eyes of my Isaac. <laughs> but because I have the favor in the eyes of God, yes. that overrides everything. Amen. So Jacob was not loved. That means that Isaac was was not only was he under the obligation to bless Esau, he, he wanted to do it. That was his favorite child. Are there people here who, who you are not the favorite child of your parent? You know, parents were supposed not to have favorite children, but in some families, you can really tell that your father really didn't like you that much. But those are the kind of people that God divinely increased. So that I may not have been a favorite child, but now I'm helping the favorite children. Yes, amen. Because God, I didn't have favor in the eyes of men. It's a sign that God is about to increase you divinely. So we say that the first sign is there's a discrepancy between the promise and your current reality. The second sign is that the people who are supposed to help you, you don't have the favor in their eyes. And the third thing is that you don't have the resources that you need in order for you to move forward. So if you read the story of Jacob from Genesis 25 until 28, you'll see something weird happening. I'm going to summarize it for you. So Jacob receives the blessing, but when he leaves his father's household, he leaves with nothing. Do you guys understand that? It's odd, huh? He's the heir, but he leaves with nothing. The Bible says this. Let's read this in Genesis 28. Let's go to verse 10. This is Jacob. Remember, this is Jacob after he had received the blessing. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haram. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. It's very easy to read that passage and just move forward. But Isaac was not a poor man. If you read before, you'll understand that Isaac was wealthy. That Isaac was so wealthy that even when he dug a well in dry places, there were waters. But Jacob, his son, when he leaves his house, leaves with nothing in hand. Jacob was so broke that he had no pillow. He had no money to pay in hand. They didn't even send servants to accompany him. Come on. Jesus, Jesus. I want to speak to someone who does not have the resources that they need. Come on. Jacob was laying down on a stone. Is it normal for someone to lay down on a rock? To sleep? That's a sign of someone who had nothing left. He didn't go to a inn. He didn't go to a hotel. He didn't go to a motel. He had nobody. He had no servant to help him. He was just walking and he reached a place. Come on. The Bible says, so let me put some context for you. Some spiritual context. Someone say spiritual context. Spiritual context. Divine context. Divine context. Divine context. It, uh, Jacob was walking so fast because he was broke so he needed to get to his destination faster because he had no place to stay but because he had no resources he just found a place the night caught up with him 
He found a place and he laid his rock. I want to speak to someone who does not have the resources they need. Come on. It's like my brother in the choir, he's saying to himself, Lord, you called me, you promised me that this year you're going to give me a breakthrough through my album. But I don't have the finances. But I'm telling you that God is giving you finances. Amen. I want to speak to someone who does not have the resources. You read the job criteria. You don't have the degree. They said master's in this, master's in that. But you barely finish your bachelor's. They said PhD in this. You don't have those qualifications. I want to speak to someone who wants to start a business but he's broke. Not only is he broke, he just lost his job. Jacob was laying on a rock. I want to speak to my Jacob. People that have been laying on rocks because they have no place, no money, no resource. They got nothing. So they're weeping and they're crying. Lord, you sent me in this country. I'm supposed to go to school, but I, I got nothing. How am I going to pay for my studies? I have no resources left. God, you gave me these children, but I have no money to feed them. I want to speak to people that have the promises of God, but don't have the physical resources. I want to speak to people who are ready to get married, but they don't know where they're going to live. I want to speak to a mother who has a child, who wants to take care of that child, but every day she's living from paycheck to paycheck. People that don't have the resources, people that have been laying on rocks, they have a certain discomfort in their way of living. Mm, Instead of the night being a pleasing night, it's a night of weeping. Instead of the night being a night of resting, you know, when you're laying on a pillow, you know, I'm picky about my pillows. I like my pillows a certain way. I probably like bought five of them before I found the one I like because I want to be comfortable. But now imagine people that are used to sleeping on a rock. My Jacobs, my Jacobs. Where are my Jacobs? Come on, come Maybe they're on, online. Come on, come my on, Jacobs, um, they sleep on rocks because they have no resources. Yes. They have no help. Yes. <laughs> so Jacob, his father was wealthy. His father was a rich man. His father had servants around the house. <laughs> but mm. just because he had servants around the house, Jacob left with no physical resource. But if you miss... If you miss the story, you're going to miss the revelation. Mm. Jacob did not have the bread, but he had the seed. Oh. So the Bible says that, so Isaac, oh Lord, Isaac did not think it was necessary to bless Isaac physically because Isaac had the promise. So Isaac said, I don't need to give you anything. I've given you the blessing. Leave these ones for Esau. On, you don't need on, it, Jacob. On, on, Go ahead. On, on, you don't need that cash. You don't need that money. You don't need that job. Go ahead because you have divine blessings with you. Yes. So even though Jacob was walking, had, was laying his head on a rock, he had the promise. So on his rock, God met him and oh, God yes. told him, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. And today I become your God. Hallelujah. So God, while Jacob had no physical resources, while Jacob had no help, that's when God said, Jacob, I'm going to divinely increase you. Can someone say amen? amen. When he had nothing left, when his head was on a rock, when you have nothing left, when you're broke to the core, ha, that's when God says, and I'm going to meet you and I'm going to tell you that your time of divine increase has come. Because Jacob needed to be broke in order that when he has wealth, he can know that God divinely increased me. Amen. So you may not have the resources that you need, but that's a sign that God is working for you. Yes. So the odds may not be in your favor, but God is in your favor. Amen. So the people that God is about to divinely increase, there's a discrepancy between the promise and what they're living. They don't have the favor of the people that are supposed to help them. They don't have the resources of the people that are supposed to help them. So then what do you do when you're not currently living the promise of God for your divine increase? What do you do if the people that are supposed to help you 
don't help you. What do you do when you are still laying on a rock, uncomfortable, twisting and turning during the night because you don't know how you're going to make it through the next month? So then what's the secret of those people that God increases divinely? Let's read this passage. I love this, I, I love this passage so much because it, it kind of like, it points to the thing that God was about to do <laughs> in Romans 9.13. <laughs> the Bible says this. Now it's speaking about kind of like the story. It says that this is God speaking. Remember the Bible says that Isaac loved who? Esau. Now this is God speaking. God is kind of like overriding whatever Isaac was saying. It's written. This is God speaking. Jacob I've loved, but Esau I've hated. So when God decides to divinely increase you, he decides by his own volition to go against the odds. Mm, he said on. that, what, what, shall, what shall we then say then? Is, is there injustice on God's part? By no means. Listen to what the Bible says. Continue. Go to the next one. Verse 15. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So the thing that breaks the unfavorable God odds is God's favor. Amen. So the person who increases divinely understands that even though the odds are stacked up against me, even though the odds are unfavorable against me, God's favor overcomes that. Amen. So God's favor, it's God's decision for him to bless you. So it's not you who decides to divinely increase. You just have to be comfortable and accept what's happening and say that these are the signs that I'm about to divinely increase. I'm barren. These are the signs that God is about to bless me with children. I'm broke. These are the signs that God is about to give me employment. It's God who decides to divinely increase you. So the people that God divinely increase, this is their secret. They understand that the favor of God overcomes unfavorable odds so that they can increase divinely. So I want someone who begins to rely on the favor of God. Amen. So when the favor of God meets you, there's two things that happen. The Bible says that when Jacob came out, don't miss this. When Jacob came out, he grabbed Esau by the heel. Whew. So when the favor of God meets you, you know why people call Jacob a cheat? Because the things that were happening to him were abnormal. So Jacob was so favored by God <laughs> that they say that he was cheating. I don't have time to, look, to, 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 to delve into this, but if you look at the story of Jacob, you'll understand that he's an honest man. Broken man, but honest man. So people were saying that Jacob was a cheater. Because when the favor of God decides to divinely increase you, it will look to the outsiders as though you're cheating. Oh, come on. So when God decides to bless your family, people are going to be like, huh? Like people where, where the country that I come from, not where you come from, the country where I come from, they're going to be like, he, that's witchcraft. It makes no sense. <laughs> he cheated. He lied. How come, how come he on, came in come this on, country yes. and, and then he, he already has a citizenship? He lied. Come on, he made come up on. stories. It makes no sense. Come on, yes. like how? How? How, how? how come he just how come he just came in this church and then he got married? How come? It makes no sense. Come on, come he, he cheated. He did something. He did this. He did that. But when God is about to divinely increase you to the outsiders, it will be as though you're grabbing the heel. Oh, but they don't on. understand that I'm not cheating. It's God who's writing the exams for Amen. me. Amen. So when, when you're writing the exam and, and God is divinely working through you, it will look like you're cheating. Let me tell you, let me proclaim now in your life that God is about to bring you in a season yes. where he's going to work in your favor. Hallelujah. To the outsiders, you'll be like a cheat. Yes. But it's because God, they don't know how to explain it very well. It makes no sense. It, like it makes no sense. How can, how can it just start and, and, and do like a, a head? Like... Like, like how? It makes no sense. I, I don't understand it. Mm. 
it'll look like cheating, but it's God's divine increase. To the people that don't understand it, it's cheating. But to you, it's divine increase. If you stand up with me, I'm going to read something to you here. Just stand up as we're closing. It's, it's just, the Lord is good. Can someone say the Lord is good? The Lord is good. Can someone say the Lord is good? The Lord is good. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I did not give this media, but trust me, Ecclesiastes 9, 11. These are for the people that the odds are working against them. Again, I saw under the sun. Ooh, I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. Come on, yes. <laughs> Nor the battle to the strong. Yes. Or bread to the wise. Nor riches to the intelligent. Nor favor to those who have knowledge. Mm. So I want to speak to people who were the slow ones in life. But God is making you through the passion line. Oh, Are there people yes. who used to be slow in life? Come on, come on. Come the on. One that, they, they were always slow in life. I want to speake to the people who are in battles but are always weak. Mm. People who are battling sickness but are always weak. Come on, they don't yes. know any prayers but only Jesus. Come on, come but on. only Jesus. Those, come are the, on. those are my people. Yes, yes, Those yes. are the people whose odds are working against them. Come on. I want to speak to people who are not considered wise mm. but they've never liked bread. Come on. Huh. Come on. You've never liked a job. You weren't the smartest. You barely passed. You've even repeated and failed certain courses. But since you graduated, miraculously graduated, Come God on. has always blessed you financially. Yes. Come on. God Come has on. always provided for you. I want to speak to people who are not considered intelligent. You know? They're not considered intelligent, but wherever they're going, there's financial blessing just attaching them. You know, they dig here, financial blessing. Come on. They do this financial blessing. Yes. They start a business yes. and everybody's yes. in. They, they can be financially blessed. Yes, yes, yes. I want to speak. <laughs> They've also said, no favor with those with knowledge. People that don't have connections in life. Mm. I don't know where to apply. Come on. I applied online. I didn't get a back door, an Come indoor. Yes. I don't have yes. a cousin yes. who works at the, at the government. I don't have a, 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 a brother who's the CEO of that. But, 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 but... Uh, Yes. This favor. Yes. This favor. Yes. And then Ecclesia says something. You're going to miss it. He says, by time, a chance happened to them all. Mm. So he doesn't quite understand. The teacher is in the Old Testament. He doesn't see the future very well. He's trying to, to juxtapose everything. Because when God gives you divine favor for divine increase, yes. he aligns the time and he aligns the circumstances in your favor. Oh, yes. So let Amen. me proclaim to you now. Let me prophesy yes. over you. Just lift up your hands. I prophesied that wherever there was a discrepancy mm. between the promise of God yes. and what you're living right now, yes. that time will come together. Amen. I prophesy over your life that even if you don't currently have the favor of men, the God who holds come the on. heart of a king come like on. a stream in his hand yes, will on. give you favor with men. Amen. So I proclaim that because you have favor with God, now you have favor with men. Amen. Because you have favor with God, now you have favor with Amen. men. I pray that God will give you not human connections, but divine connections. Amen. That people who are supposed to bless you will bless you. Amen. And those who are in positions that were supposed to bless you and refuse to bless you, there's a change. There's a replacement. Amen. God Amen. is changing situations. He's changing circumstances yes. in your favor. Yes. I'm speaking now and prophesying over your life. If you've been laying on a rock, mm. I prophesy yes. that it's the time of your divine increase. Amen. That the time of your divine increase has started right Amen. now. Amen. Right Amen. now. Right now. Amen. Right now, the time of... Begin, pray, begin thanking I God. Begin thanking now. God. I it now. Begin thanking God. I receive Say, it Lord, now. thank you. Thank, thank you for your favor. Hallelujah. Thank you for your favor. Thank you, Lord Thank Jesus. you for your favor for divine increase. Thank you for your, thank your favor, you for favor of divine increase. Thank, thank, you, thank you for, him for the favor. Lord. Over your family, thank, thank you for, for the favor. favor. Thank you for, thank you for the favor. Thank the you for the favor. Increase into my life. Lord, I come to thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your favor. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Thank you for your, the, the divine increase of this morning, oh God. Over my life, Lord. Over my health, oh God. Over my family, Lord. And this morning, God, I want to thank you. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for divine increase. Thank you, God, for the change, oh Lord. Lord, in this morning again, I know, God, I will see you Wait, help again. Me out, help me out, help me out. God, in this morning, I will see you walk again. <laughs> You, Even Lord, when God. I don't see it, you're working. Hallelujah. Even when I don't hear it, you're working. Thank you, Lord. you are working. You are working. When the odds are against me, you are working. You are working. Hallelujah. You are working. Begin Thank thanking you. God who works. Begin Thank thanking you, God who works. Thank he works in your favor. You. Release your faith. When the odds are Thank against you, you release Thank your faith. You, Thank you, Lord. 
God who works, thank you, Lord. The God my favorite, thank you, Lord. The God is on my side. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Never stop. Thank you, Lord. Even when I don't see it, you're walking. Even then I don't see it, you're walking. You never stop. You never stop walking. You never stop. Oh, even when I don't see, even when I don't see it, even when I don't feel it. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop. You never. Even when I don't see, even when I don't see it, even when I don't feel it. You never stop. Oh, hey, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Father, we thank you because you're working things for our good. Father, where there are discrepancies between your promise and our reality, we proclaim divine increase. Father, where we don't have the favor of those who are supposed to help us, we proclaim divine increase. Lord, for those of us who have been laying on a rock and have no resources, no help, no financial resources, we proclaim divine increase. Thank you again because you are giving us divine favor for divine increase. The odds may be stacked up against us, but you loved us, God, because you love us. You're causing our families to prosper. Because you love us, you're causing our, our lives to prosper. Because you loved us, you're causing our education to prosper. Because you love us, you're causing our finances to increase. So may God bless you. May you experience divine increase.